Hey everybody, this is Bob with uh, Bob CNC and uh, haven't been out in the shop for a while. Kind of got interested in some uh, programming with uh, JavaScript and learning a little bit more than I probably want to. But uh, the good news is, is I'm looking at taking the open build software and creating a simplified version of it with some new features for uh, Bob CNC customers. So we're going to do our own CAD CAM and the uh, Cinder, uh, starting with the open builds, open source software. So what I thought I would do is just uh, get on the machine and take a video and show you some of the features that I've gotten so far. So yeah, join me. So you might be familiar with this. This software is called Visual Studio Code. It is what I'm actually uh, running the CAM software in using live server. So this is not really a uh, how to do code video. Just wanted to show you some of the cool things. So I'll go ahead and open the live server and we will get started. So the first thing that's gonna come up when you're brand new is uh, you're gonna have to select your machine. It just has a, a generic machine here, but as soon as I come here and I select, let's say the Evolution 4, it will fill in the size and you can actually go ahead and add some start G code if you want or some NG code. And also if you have a, a slower computer, you can disable some of the, um, the tool width preview, which takes some computing power, but we won't do that for, for this one. So you'll hit save and the uh, uh, grid will go ahead and uh, go to the size of the machine that you selected. So in the original version, you have text, circle and rectangle. All of these are new. I'll go through those and the enhancements that I made to these. Uh, along the side, if you're not familiar with it, this will let you mouse select, mouse move, mouse erate, erase, and this one will let you scale, move, and rotate any of the objects that we're doing. Okay, so first of all, if you wanted to change machines, you can come change your machine, uh, but we have the one selected that we're gonna use today. So text, I did not make any modification. On the circle one, I thought it would be cool to have a center point so that, let's say I make this 100 and uh, let's, well, let's just leave this one at 50 so we can see what happens. And it's gonna be uh, a radius of 10 and then it's gonna have 32 segments. We'll go ahead and create that. And we will see that this is at 100 in the X and 50 in the Y. So that's the center of the location. So if you know where you want it, you might as well put it there, okay? So that's the what I did to the circle. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Now for the rectangle, it was really just the same thing, the width and the height. I added the center location so that uh, you can do the same thing. You can put it where you want, but I also added a uh, radius. So if I change this to zero, uh, we'll have basically the square uh, that you, know, you, t you had in the beginning. However, if you want to have a radius, so we can put that to eight or, or whatever we want, uh, we can have the, the radiuses on our rectangle. And um, the next thing that we can do, if we would like on this one, is I'll go ahead and change it a little bit to 75, but let's go ahead and change this to 12, but now I'm gonna invert the radiuses. So now you can see that we have the radiuses that are inverted and it's the, the size that, that we asked it to be. And also the position, it's at 50-50. Okay, so there you have that. And I'll go ahead and uh, uh, delete this. And then we'll go on to the star. So the star is a new feature. As it turns out that if this is 100, this is 38.2% 38 to make a, a five point star. That's the uh, ratio that you need. So if you change this to 200, you'd have to double this. So you would want to center your star wherever you want. So if you want it centered at 100 and 200, and you want a five point star that's that big, there you go. And you can see that it's at 200 and a hundred. Okay, now you're not limited uh, to a five point star. If you wanted to make a 14 point star, you could just go ahead and, and do that and it would create that kind of a star. Um, it has an outside radius and an inside radius that it uses to create those. So uh, if, you make this one closer to the outside. Let's say if we make it 80 and 100, then you'll see that the outside radius is a, a lot closer and you get a different kind of star, okay? So that is really the star feature that we've added that you'll be able to do. 
The next is the ellipse. Again, you have your center point and then just the width and the height. So we'll just go ahead and create one right here. And then if we create another one, let's go up to maybe 150. And I guess that would be okay there. But this time I'll make this 100 so that you can just see that it's a little bit longer. So you can make the ellipse the shape that you want. If you want it facing the other way, you could always rotate it or you could just change the, the numbers around. So you'll be able to take care of that. Okay, so I'll delete those and we'll go on to the triangle. Uh, right now it's got just a three, four, five, which is a, a, a right angle triangle. So it's gonna create that right angle triangle, but it does not need to be a right angle triangle. It could be any one that you want. So uh, if we want the you know, equal lateral triangle, We'll just make them all the same, and you will see that uh, we will get that nice triangle there. All right, so that's the triangle. Again, you can, it's got the center point that you can put anywhere you want. Uh, notice on this one, it's really not 50-50, it's close. I guess I probably should do a little bit more math uh, on that to, to make sure that it's actually on the center. So we'll see if I get to that. Okay, the next one's really a simple line. It's just really the start point and the end point. And you can see that it starts at these two points. So an X and a Y, and it's an X and a Y for the end point. Again, you can rotate this uh, if you wanted to, or you can uh, you know, keep moving the position uh, with this. So we'll just do like clockwise 45, and then you'll be have that kind of a line. So you can do that with all of these features. You can rotate it and move them around either with the mouse or with this uh, uh, scale rotate or move button so okay so now that we've done that we'll click back here so that we can highlight and get rid of that and then there's one last one that i'm working on and that's grid so if your machine is 600 millimeters by 600 and you wanted to do a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter spacing then you click that button and then you have the g-code now i will say uh, at this point Creating the G-code on this is long because it goes down one and comes back, goes down the other, comes back. Uh, so I'll see if I can optimize that a little bit. But those are the new features that we have um, for you know, creating your uh, design. One thing I do want to show you really quick that I'm working on, and this only applies to our revolution folks. So if you have a revolution, it's our rotating axis. And so if you select that machine, it's gonna act a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And notice up here, you have a project diameter. I think the max is 165 and it's like 610 millimeters long. Notice it draws a cylinder here because we're basically going to take this area and we're going to draw work on that. And then we're gonna wrap it to the cylinder when we create G-code. So I'll just go ahead and uh, create some text. And then I will maybe make an ellipse and create that. And then we'll get to kind of see how this works. So I'll kind of move this over a little bit. And then I'll move this one over as, uh, as well. Probably should have said something there, but uh, I'll go ahead and make a um, cut on this one. We'll just do a regular uh, vector, no offset. Uh, maybe one millimeter deep and we'll hit apply and it will create that that tool path and then we will click on this one now and we'll add another operation and we'll go ahead and maybe make a pocket cut right and let's go ahead and make our final depth so we'll have six passes here and we'll do that now if I go ahead and say create G code look what happens it actually wraps them around the cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the stuff that's on here. And you can see that the G-code is actually deep on the pocket cut, and it also wrapped it on the cylinder. So just note that if I put my mark right here on the uh, zero point, then it will be at the zero point. And then the further I go up or down will be actually on the back side. So uh, now you'll be able to take your revolution and take a flat uh, design and wrap it around a cylinder. And also notice if I change the cylinder now to let's say that it's only 100 or about four inches in diameter, 
you can see that it's, uh-oh, it's off. But if I regenerate the G-code, it will put it right back on the cylinder surface and it'll be a little bit further wrapped around, right? Because it's a smaller cylinder. And you can see if you view the G-code that you actually have your X and your A and you have no Y. So you'll be able to save this G-code file and you'll be able to run that G-code file. So that's pretty cool. Notice that if you go back here and you go back to the revolution, or I'm sorry, the evolution or any of the other routers, uh, and you hit save and you regenerate that G-code, it's going to go right back to flat, right? Because that's the type of machine that you have. So anyway, that's the uh, cool functions that we're working on. The idea would be is to release this on our website and hopefully make a downloadable version for both this CAD CAM, which we're going to call Basic CAM, and also Basic Sender, which will uh, be a complete package uh, for us in the future. So I appreciate you watching, and if you got some feedback, I would love to hear it. Uh, so thanks again. Till next time.